In this video we're going to bring all of our instructions together and build an assembler in Excel. So let's start building our assembler. Now don't worry if you're not sure what an assembler is, you'll know by the end of this video. So we'll start off with a recap of all of our instructions. So we've seen first of all we had an ALU instruction, so if the first bit was high then it's an ALU instruction. The next three bits tells it whether the instruction is an add, shift right, shift left, no and, or, exclusive or, or compare. So that's the code for each of those. And the next two bits there tell us what register we're going to be using, R0123, and these last two bits here tell you what register from RB we're going to be using. So really what the code for it we could write is add ra comma rb so that could be our, our little assembly language code for one of these instructions so what this assembly language code tells us is we want to add the contents of the register ra to the contents of the register rb and put the answer into register rb so this here is our assembly language but what we have here up here and ones and zeros as our machine code. So that's the ones and zeros that the CPU actually understands. So for example, this add RARB would be given by our one zero zero zero, and then we would have a choice for RA and RB. So for example, it could be uh, zero zero for R uh, zero, and it could be um, zero one for R one. So we need to find a simple way of converting this assembly language into the ones and zeros of the machine code and that's what our assembler is going to do. So before we go into that we'll just go ahead and we'll have a look at some of the rest of our instructions. So the next instruction we looked at was the store instruction. So the store instruction was given by 0, 0, 0, and the value for store would be 1. So it would be 0, 0, 0, 1, and then we again would have a choice of the registers we want to store to, and it would be the uh, R reg A, and we'd be able to choose the four registers, and then there'd be reg B, and again we'd be able to choose one of the four registers. So the assembly language for this here would be written as ST for store, and then we would have RA comma RB. So really this is telling us what we want to do is we can store the contents of the register RB to a RAM location which is given in register RA. So next we look at the load instruction. So the load instruction is given by 0000, zero, zero, zero for the load and then we've got a choice here over RA and our RB. So the load instruction in our assembly language would be written as LD RA comma RB, so LD for load. And what this instruction does is it loads the register given in RB with the contents from the RAM address given in register RA. We then looked at the data instruction, and the data instruction is given by 0010. We didn't care what these two bits are, and then the last two bits were reg B, so we could choose either register R012 or 3. So in our assembly language, it's going to be written as data, RB, comma, and then there would be our 8 bits. So really what's that saying is, we want to load the 8 bits from the next RAM address into register RB. Next we looked at the first of our jump instructions. So this is jump register and it's given by 0011. We didn't care what these two bits were and the last two bits chose the reg B. So our assembly language is GMPR for jump register space RB. So really all this is, does is change the 
program execution so that it jumps to the address given in register RB. Our second jump instruction was jump address and it's given by 0100 and these last four bits are don't care. So the assembly language for that is GMP space EDDR, so that's jump address. So it jumps to the address given in the next byte in RAM. Our final jump instruction was the jump if. So the code for it is 0101. And then we checked the flag bits given by carry, a is greater, a is equal, and the zero. So this is going to be given by our assembly language, GMP for jump, and of course we'll have one of these four bits will be set, and it'll be a d d r. So what this does is it jumps to the address given in the next RAM location if the flags are set. Our next instruction was the clear flags instruction and that's given by 0110 and we don't care about these and it just sets all the flags to zero. And our assembly language for it is CLF. Our final instruction is the end instruction and it's given by 11001111 and the assembly language for it is END and it just tells us that we're at the end of our program. So we want to gather together all of our assembly language and machine code in the one place and we can do that simply in an Excel spreadsheet. So we'll have an example here and this is our entire assembly language and a description of it in words and an example and also the machine code here. So let's take for example the, the very first one. So the add instruction, well the op code which is the machine code for it is given by 1000 and there's a space here for another four bits. So those other four bits are going to be the register A and register B choice. So the description here is we can add RA and RB and we put the answer in RB. So the example for that is going to be add RA comma RB. So you can see here the first lot here, they've got the one set high. And remember when it was a one set high, it was going to be an ALU instruction. And these are all of our ALU instructions here. So pick out another one, uh, exclusive OR RA comma RB. So it does an exclusive OR with the contents of register RA and RB and puts the answer into RB. Now the same thing goes for we have our load instruction and again it's looking for another four bits and we've got our store, our data, we've got our jump register, we've got our jump instruction and then we've got our jump if instructions which are the full eight bits and we've got all 16 of those and we've got our clear flags. Now at the bottom here we've got our end instruction and in here, we've just put the values for the register. So register R0 is going to be 00, zero and then 011011. Now, these four here, we're not using them at the moment. So that there gives us our, all the information we want in order to start building a little assembler. So we can see what we would want our assembler to do. If we had written a program in assembly language, so let's say the program, the first line was, uh, was add R0, R1, then we would have to go and find out what the actual machine code is for the add. So we'd have to have some sort of lookup to come along and say, well, add is 1000. And then we would have to find out what R0 is. So R0, we would come down here and we would find R0 and it would be 00. zero. And then we'd have to find out what RB is. So again, we'd have to come along here and find RB, which is would be in this case would be the R1, and that would be 01. So all we're really doing with this assembler is changing this assembly language into the machine code just by looking it up and finding what the particular op code is for it. 
So that's what we're going to go and do in Excel. So let's have a look at that now. So if you go down to the resources section, you'll see that there's access to an Excel spreadsheet called Assembler. So you can go down and open that up. Now, if you want access to actually run the macro which I've developed in it, you'll probably have to go and enable macro. So if you get into your file and you go into options and there's going to be trust center and trust center settings and macro settings you can put on enable all macros you can always turn it off whenever you're finished okay so that will let you run any of the macros that I've written in VBA also if you want access to the actual developer section then you can open up and get this extra developer tab again this is running in Microsoft Office 2010 so it might be different depending on what version of, of Office Excel you're using If you want access to any of the VBA code which I've written, then you have to get access to the developer section. So if you're in the Excel 2010, you can get into File and Options, Customize Ribbon. And then if you check this box here saying Developer, that will give you access to this Developer tab. Potentially you won't need to go in to look at it, but uh, it's handy to have a look and see and it's reasonably easily enough to understand the, the code and change it to suit yourself if you want to develop this assembler further. So if you want to use this assembler, but you're not particularly interested in what's happening, how it's working in the background, then what we could do is we could hide these two columns, the columns M and N, you won't need them. Now what we're going to do is we put our code that we want to run, that is our assembly language, in this columns B, C, D and E. Now there's already a program sitting there and we haven't gone over how to write a program in assembly but we'll do that in the next video. But this little program here adds two numbers together. So let's take one particular line so line number 11, it says add R1 with R2 and it puts the contents into R2. Now, when we want to work out what the machine code is, we just click on the output to Logisim and it goes through and it works out the machine code for us. And it asks us where we want to save the file. So it actually creates a file called MySim and we can place it in a directory. Okay, so I'm going to place this in this directory here and there's a suggestion of a path so you can put in whatever path you want to. You press OK so it saved that file. Now you can see here it's generated all the machine code that we need but the actual file that we're going to use is going to have to be in hexadecimal. So we've got a conversion here to hexadecimal so our actual final file is just going to look like this and that will be the file that we're going to use in order to load up our CPU. So let's go and have a quick look at this file. So this is a file that the assembler creates and we've just got all of the hex code in a line and we add in zeros to the very end and you can see here that the CF is the end command and that's all just zeros. So we're going to be loading this up into the CPU but of course we don't know where we're going to load it yet. We've still got one more level to create in the CPU but before we do that we'll go ahead and we'll have a look and see how we can actually write this code and how this is able to add two numbers together. So let's look at this assembler in a little bit more detail. If we were to open up all the other the missing columns. So if we can double click on this double side of this W, that will open up all the missing columns. Now let's take one as an example. Again, we'll take this add R1, R2. So we're wanting to try and find the machine code for add R1, R2. Now whenever we work it out, it's going to be this value here, which is our 1, our 0000110. Now in order to work that out, 
what it does is it comes along to the this column here and it, it looks up the add so it looks up this add value in this column here okay so it finds the add in this column and then it returns the value 1001 so that's what it's done there it's returned that value 1001 so it's just a, a VLOOKUP and if we go to the next one it's looking for the R2, R1 so it looks for R1 in this column here so it finds the R1 down here and it returns 0, 01 so just a VLOOKUP again and it returns the value 0, 01 and we do the same for the R2 bit it goes into this column finds R2 and then it returns 1, 0 so that's us got the the code here and these three columns and then we've got to concatenate it that is join them together so we've joined them together in these three columns and this is our machine code that we're looking for and it does that for all the rest of them so it's quite a simple thing just using vlookups now there's another extra little section here and is that we do note here that we're going to actually have some of the instructions are going to have two bytes so there's going to be a data byte and there's going to be the RA in this case it's 00, zero and that would be 00, zero as well and we're going to have the other byte here as well so that's the data instructions over two bytes so it means we're going to have to have some way of taking the machine code and then also the data bytes here so that's just got our machine code there and then we've also got our um, our, uh, in fact this is our instruction and this is our, our data byte so we're going to have to take this data byte here and, and shove it in just down below and this one the next column down below and next column down below so we're going to have to take all of these and we're going to have to squeeze these other values in below okay so that one there should actually go into that space there and that one there should get into the space down below so I've just written a little script in order to do that so in order to see the script what you can do is you can get into uh, design mode and you can click on the actual button which is just at the right hand side here so you can click on the button and I'll just show you the script so I've written a, written a little bit of VBA script so you can read through that yourself or if you want to actually step through it you could come in and you can press debug and you can see here there's a step into which is F8 so we can just simply click on F8 and it will run through and there you see it's cleared all the contents and it will just run through the code so whenever you work through you can pass through it and you'll see the actual machine code appearing so you can you can follow this actual script here and you can see it appearing there okay and when it gets down to the end it actually just asks you where you want to save it to so that's the path that we're going to save it to so if you're interested in, in doing that you can open that up and have a look yourself also if you go to run through this and you have a problem here so I just press OK on, or OK on this you'll see it comes up with an error because it's looking for a file so if that happens then you can either get to the debug and have a look and see the coder you just end it and you can start again okay so you can just end it start again until you put in the right address okay now that's all there is for the assembly language assembler you can take this and have a little play with it it's not completely robust but it does work and it does give us the values that we need and it makes it a lot quicker uh, in order generating the machine code so thank you for listening to this video. In the next video, we'll go and we'll look at adding two numbers together and we'll create our assembly language program. So thank you for listening. Goodbye.